and welcome to the Gamers Table. Hi. It is Monday, and we are reviewing Hour of Glory. Hour of Glory. Mm -hmm. Now this one is another one that has a little bit of a backstory to it. We got an email, and you probably have seen it if you're a faithful watcher of the show, and why wouldn't you be, where somebody asked <laughs> us to watch, Hockey. asked us to review Hour of Glory. And we responded saying we don't really play war games very much, and so we probably wouldn't get to it. And he replied to us saying it's not a war game, it's got an, it's like a one hour sneaking espionage game with a timer. And as soon as he started saying that, it sort of clicked into me that maybe I'd heard of that game before. And then I looked it up online and as soon as I saw it, I said, ah, Robert Florence in Downtime Town did that. He gave it a good review and I wanted to try that game. So I sent off to Warmaker, the guys who make this game. This game is almost 10 years old. And they still agreed to send us a copy for review. So thumbs up for them for supporting the fans. Thank you. And you guys did a good job because we really like this game a lot. It's fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's tense. It's probably the, for me, it's a very thematic game because you feel the tension. You feel like the need to hurry up and get it, but you know, slow down, be careful. It is 1944, and a shattered world faces a fifth year of total war. Hitler's ambition has spread across continents like a polluted tidal wave, swallowing whole nations in a deluge of terror and brutality. But now the tide is about to turn. This year, the Allies will launch Overlord, a massive combined arms operation to take back occupied Europe and wipe the Nazi stain from the face of the Earth forever. But as the free forces prepare to topple one tyrant, it seems that another has been waiting to seize power. Allied intelligence recently discovered that a Bavarian aristocrate known as the Baron... Aristocrate? Aristocrate. Who is a fox? ...has been using his wealth to levy a private army and assemble a team of top military scientists. It is believed that he is developing a secret weapon of unprecedented destructive power. Unfortunately, his progress, intentions, and whereabouts are a mystery! <laughs> With the resources focused single-mindedly on D-Day, only a small subsection of the Allied Secret Service has been assigned to this new threat! Under the command of Brigadier Robert Berkeley, the secret Allied Brigade Re Reconnaissance Expedition, Sabre, have recruited elite agents from Great Britain, the United States, and the Soviet Union. Their first mission, to infiltrate one of the Baron strongholds, discover the extent of his power, and what he plans to do with it. That wasn't boring. I know. No, but... that was pretty good. That was actually <clears throat> interesting. But... Yeah, it's just... Okay, you've, you're standing... I don't care how good of a ninja or whatever you want to be or you know spy or whatever if you're standing right beside someone uh you know or right in front of someone they're gonna see you i don't care what kind of role you gotta make you know if you if one person wanders into a room and you're in there and you're not you know there's nothing to hide behind you know they're gonna shoot they're gonna defend themselves or try and get rid of you you know <laughs> they want to kill you you're a spy you're the enemy get out of there but if you make that role hey you're fine um other than yeah. that, the game plays pretty well. Like, the rules are pretty consistent and everything like that. Although some of the logic seems a little lack. A lot, but it's it's a fun game. Though. Yeah, it's, it's still very consistent. It's still fun. Yeah. yeah. The logic applies both ways. It's not yeah. just one guy. Exactly. It's, it's all not, the way. Yeah. Any limits that are imposed are imposed on players and the enemy mm -hmm. alike. Because it is a great stealth game, it has a lot of tension to it because that timer. You're just staring at that timer and those numbers are going down and down and down and down. Never up. There's no way to ever add time to that timer. It only goes down. This is what makes this game <coughs> tense The and timer, exciting. again. It's yes. a timer and it starts at 60 minutes and it can crank down as you're, 60 as you're again. <laughs> from 60 minutes down yes. to zero minutes. Yes. Now at the start of the game you think, ah! We'll use up some time, no problem, no problem. Yeah. You, know, you get about a third of the way into the game, like, and more than a third of the time is gone. You say, oh man, we gotta start saving time. Yeah, we gotta all. But now the pressure's on you because the Commandant is doing his best to find you guys and set up alerts and get guards in here to wipe you out. Which means you need to try and be more careful, which means you take more time, and the time is ticking down, the time is ticking down. They've balanced this game so well. When you win this game, you're almost always less than 10 minutes left on that timer. Oh, it becomes yes. a very, yeah. It's very a close. very thematic game. It's just a definite struggle, and I find it's win or lose with either side. It's it's very close. 
Like it comes down to, I, I find it really hard to be on the defense because you know you, get, you got your sentries to hear something, so they get an alert marker. So you've got to bring your commanding officer down to collect the alert marker. And uh, yeah, you can only uh, call guards if one of the intruders are is in assault mode, in the red mode, the non-sneaky mode. So. And as soon as they're out of the sneak, out of the assault mode, then the guards will leave. So, pretty much all the power is in the intruder for the intruders. It, the uh, person who controls the com the commanding officer really has a hard time trying to figure out how to trap them in or how to make sure that they can somehow spot them. The Commandant, when it starts, is at a serious disadvantage. Because right. until they break cover, or he forces them to break cover, he can call an alert and bring a guard in. But if they're all sneaking, the guard will go, well, I don't see anybody, and leave again. Yeah. you got to get them to expose their position so you can attack them with your guards. Yeah. And the only way for the Commandant to do that is to actually walk up and bump into the one of them, so, ah, yeah. I see you! Exactly. But then they pull out their gun and shoot the Commandant dead. And the Commandant gets three Commandants yeah. before he's got no more. Yeah. That's the thing about the, this game. You can be walking down a hallway. It seems like the whole game's played in the dark with slippers on. You're sneaking around until you bump into somebody or make a really ridiculously loud noise. Just Start shooting your guns. Yeah. <laughs> make yeah. a bad All roll. This is one bad roll and... There yeah. you are. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I stepped on a twig. <laughs> yes. oh, yep. I enjoy the tension of the game. I definitely... Enjoy the the mechanics. It's not realistic, but it state it sticks in with the the, the game. This game well, has way. this game has a sweet spot at, at four players for sure, yeah. because you have the American and the British guy mm -hmm. are they're good. Okay, you guys go find the intelligence that we need because we got to collect a lot to win. The Russian guy super stealthy, good at killing. So two go in, find the intelligence. The Russian guy just goes through, knifing all the guards so there's nobody in the way. You do that strategy, you're probably gonna win. If you don't do that strategy, you're probably not, because three guys run through that time fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a neat scoring mechanism too. The people who are going through have to grab intelligence, and the intelligence are in colors. If you uh, get three of the same color, it's worth two points. If you get three of the same nation, you got the American, Britain, and uh, yeah, Russia. USSR, yeah. And uh, yeah, if you collect all the same nation, that's worth one point. And you can go ahead and say that one. Then you've got your map, which is a, a point on its own. So you only need the one card for that. And different number of players in the game. Requires different number of points. Yes. No. And this is the game of, this is the day of apparently finishing every, each other's sentences for everything we say. This is from Damon. My favorite gamer's table moment was the hilarious running joke you had all through episode 39, Cape Horn. I am of course referring to Chris's tank top and necklace. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the puns. <laughs> Screw the innuendos. I did reply to him saying that Chris really wishes he could forget that shirt. Oh, uh, yes. You're never going to live that down. I mean, no, it's gonna be out that's there. the it's shirt. That's many. the shirt. I, uh... <laughs> Anyway, wrapping up for Hour of Glory. I give Hour of Glory a 9. If you're not into the one versus many, then this is probably not for you, but mm -hmm. it, it is a lot of fun. It's very tense for both sides because mm -hmm. the Commandant's like... Yeah, you uh, want to make sure you get in they're, and out. They're getting all this information. i got to yeah. stop them. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll give this one a 7.5. It kind of... The one thing that bugs me is the like the logic and okay you're standing right in front of your guy and he can't see see you because you made a sneak roll. You're in the same room, he's standing right in front of you. You've opened the door right behind a guy and he has no idea you're there. I'm under a cardboard box. Yes, exactly. Like, <laughs> you can't see me. No, you can't see me. No. They, uh, I can't see you, you can't see me. <laughs> there really isn't a lot of variety though to the game too at the same time because you're pretty much you're doing the same thing this is the same way to score points all the time so it, I find it might be might come a, become a little repetitive but it's still a pretty good game 
You definitely want to alternate who plays the Covenant. Not yeah, you don't want to be doing time. the same role all the time or anything like that. You want to switch it up. I give Hour of Glory an 8. There are some issues with the game as we're talking about it. There should, could be a little more documentation. Not in the rule book. The rule book is... Oh. A lot of colored pictures. It was great. Well illustrated and everything, but <coughs> this rule book could probably boil down to about three pages. It, it's, it's a definite tug and pull. You, you, you need to get in there. You need to grab the information you need, and you need to get out, and you need to do it fast. But... If you go too fast and you get sloppy, then you alert the defense. And the defense then could kill you, which makes you lose even more time, obviously. So that's it for another episode of The Gamer's Table. Tune in next week when we review another game. Mm -hmm. Just as well as we review this one. We should almost change it instead of like game reviews to game discussions, considering what people say about what we do. Yeah, well, yeah, it is more of a discussion. It's an opinion. We review, yeah. and we give a score on how much we like it and how solid we think the game is. It's and not. It's certainly not a game well, instruction. Even, well, it's not no. an instruction. It's yeah. It's more of a review and a discussion. It's well, not. and the best part, anybody who's watched a lot of these shows has a pretty good idea of the kind of games we like and why we like them. So yeah. our scores not only tell you what we think of the game, it tells you whether or not you want to buy that game. Yeah. Right. If I rate it low, the guys who want co-op games with a lot of theme shouldn't buy the game. If Chris rates it low, um, there's too much red. Too much and don't want it. If Ken <laughs> rates it low, all the artwork was black and white. No. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to be biased in any way. I mean, so, unless it's uh, Galactic, which he has to. Be. I like Galactic. That's <laughs> yeah. well, a fun game. Yes, it is. It's very. Stay tuned. Next, coming up soon. Craig would like to probably lower his score in Galactica, though, I think. He's mentioned it recently, but yeah. he's not a big, quite as big. Coming up fan. soon, uh, the special Halloween episode. Don't miss it. Ooh. We won't. Ooh.